Well, hey everybody, welcome back. All right, well, first and foremost, I just wanted to say thank you so much to all of you who sent your thoughts and prayers my direction while I was away dealing with this health situation over the last three or so weeks. Thanks, guys. I really appreciate that. And I'm so sorry I wasn't able to get back to all of your um, wonderful comments and emails. Um, there's just so many. Uh, and But I'm here to say I read through all of them, and I can't say thank you enough. You know, I'm a, I'm a Christian man, and that really meant a lot to me. Thanks, guys. You're just awesome. Okay, so where are we at, and what happened while I was away? Well, I went back to Wisconsin and uh, checked in with the doctors at Aurora Healthcare, and they poked and prodded me from one side to the other, um, took blood. I had a CT scan of my heart and lungs looking for calcium buildup, um, which turned out absolutely negative. My heart and lungs were perfect. Um, then the blood work came in, and we figured out what caused the high blood pressure. What it was, guys, was a uh, I was really low on potassium. Now, I got my cheat sheet here. I'll go over that with you here real quick. So, um, potassium, you're supposed to be between 3.4 and 5.1, and I was at 2.9, and that's pretty darn low. Now, what does potassium have to do with high blood pressure? Well... Um, potassium in your diet allows for your veins and arteries to stay relaxed, okay? Not so stiff and rigid. And when your arteries and veins are relaxed, it allows blood flow much, much easier, okay? But if, you have, if you're really low on potassium, they can start to, like, tense up and squeeze a little bit, and that'll increase the blood flow, which increases your blood pressure. So that's what was going on. That's what raised my blood pressure. You know, this whole ordeal started with my blood pressure at, um, I'm trying to go off of memory here, it was 211 over 167. That's crisis levels. That's where you're just about ready to have a heart attack or a stroke. When I went into the doctor, they, got, they were down to around 155 over 112, which was stage two hypertension. And then after I was on the chlorothaladone for a week, the numbers started dropping down into like the 140 over 92 range. Yeah, I got my cheat sheet here. And uh, finally, um, this last week, the numbers are on really acceptable levels in the like 134 over 90. And then finally this morning, I got a real good one at 128 over 85. And that's just awesome. So blood pressure levels are back where they need to be. And uh, my strategy is what I'm going to do, guys, is I'm going to keep, I'm going to stay on uh, my potassium supplements, which are 1,500 milligrams daily. And uh, then uh, they say that uh, you're supposed to, your, your, your daily potassium intake should be between uh, 3,500 to 4,700 milligrams daily. So right now I'm taking 1,500. My strategy is this. I'm going to stay on the potassium um, for the next few weeks, okay? And then about two weeks from now, I'm going to jump off the chlorothaladone, which is my heart medication. And then I'm going to keep an eye on my numbers. And I'm going to see if my numbers climb back up without being on that medication, okay? If they don't climb, well, then I can take the heart medication and chuck it out the window. I don't need it, okay? But if indeed the numbers do climb back up and get back into stage one or stage two hypertension, then unfortunately, um, yep, I'm just, I'm going to have to stay on, on heart medication. And that's just the way it goes. So uh, as far as everything else goes they, goes, they did a complete panel on me and everything was absolute perfect. Um, white blood cell, red blood cell count, I mean, you name it. They even checked, oh, the other important one was my thyroid. Now a lot of you guys know on you know I'm a I'm a heavy set guy I've got the old spare tire going on here I'm going to be 50 years old pretty soon, and uh, but I was never this heavy okay before I, long before I uh, got cancer and long before my YouTube channel um, my weight was around 195 pounds right now I am 100 or I mean yeah 195 right now I'm 237 and that's just that's just too much weight so. Uh, 
knowing now that uh, I don't have any hurdles in front of me, knowing that my thyroid is in perfectly good health, I'm going to move again uh, with my keto diet, just like I did last winter where I lost 12 pound, pounds. But now my goal is to lose about 30 and get down to the skinny guy that I used to be. And that's going to really help out uh, with energy and it's going to allow me to explore these mines um, a, a lot better instead of toting around all of this blubber. You know what I mean? So a lot of you might be asking, uh, what did you do over the last three or so weeks? Well, like I said, I went to Wisconsin. That's where most of my extended family lives, my sisters and my good friend Don um, from Fond du Lac, Wisconsin. Hey, Don, it was uh, awesome spending time with you. Always fun. And then while I was back there, um, I got to spend some time with my nephew, Jacob. And he works at a place called Magra Hearth. And what they do is they build concrete hearths around fireplaces because today with today's building codes um, you're not allowed to actually have a wooden hearth so they they form these concrete ones and then they paint them to look like real wood it's just incredible i mean i was really impressed when uh, jacob gave me the tour uh, and while i was there i got to visit with mike hi mike how you doing um mike's a fan of the show and uh he, he, he really he really enjoys the show, and that was a lot of fun, uh, you know, chatting with Mike. And I also got to chat with Ken. Now, Ken is going to be um, a person that I'm going to be working with in the future. He's going to be building me dynamite boxes. And I thought that would be something really cool that I could offer offer on my eBay site. So rather than taking them out of mines, um, Mike is going to be building authentic dynamite boxes uh, that you guys can purchase uh, and we're gonna work on this project sometime down the road other things that I did when I was back there I spent a lot of time a lot of time with my sisters and especially my mother and uh, that was a lot of fun we did some mud larking on Lake Michigan we uh, we went to an old uh, munitions factory that was uh, at, in, at during peak of operation um, it was uh, it was 19 I'm sorry it was 1942 during peak of operation. Now the whole place is derelict. That was a fun place to walk around and explore. And uh, yeah, we just did so many things. And I tried to completely separate myself from my YouTube channel and just you know go out into the world and enjoy myself. But the best thing that I did, guys, and you're going to love this. And this is going to be a project I'm going to be working on. You know, I don't know when it'll come out, maybe the next month or two. But on my way to Wisconsin, I stopped off at Carlsbad Caverns and uh, um, I documented the whole thing, okay? And I'm going to do a really cool Google Earth fly-in thing that's going to be kind of neat. And I'll post that, like I said, in a, in, in a month or two from now. But I think it's going to be unlike anything that's ever been done uh, of how Carlsbad Caverns has ever been filmed or documented. I think you're going to like it. Okay, so uh, where are we going from here? Real quick. So I'm back in Nevada now. Right over there is Nellis Air Force Range. And as a matter of fact, while I've been talking to you guys right now, I can hear the boys out at the Tonopah de Test Range dropping ordnance um, on the live fire range out there. It's kind of cool. But it's good to be back in Nevada um, Wisconsin's nice, no doubt. I love the trees, but boy, oh boy, do I hate the heat and humidity. Whew. So it's good to be back in this dry climate here um, with very, very little uh, humidity. And the temperature is just gorgeous. So it's time to get back to work. So here's what I've got for you guys in the coming weeks. Number one, we've got to go back and use the schnozzolator to drop down into that vertical shaft um, because I do believe that that drift is going to go back underneath the mountain and I have high hopes that that's going to connect into a large stope and where we, we will find the end and solve the mystery of the yellow rope, okay? The other thing that I want to do is um, the very last episode that I produced before going out on my health break I want to drop that back down into that incline and I want to clear away all that debris so I, none of it can fall on my head and I want to rope down into that big stope because that, that mine is 117 years old and I guarantee nobody's ever been down there in a very long time. Another thing that I want to do is 
If you could remember, this was a few months ago when me, uh, Mr. M and Randy were out in the desert using the schnozzelator. I went down another vertical shaft, okay? And when I got into the very bottom, for whatever reason, you know, total brain fart, I didn't turn to the right and explore the drifts at the very bottom of the shaft. And because I was alone that day, well, well, I mean, I was down in the mine all by myself down in there. Um, I didn't get a chance to explore that winds. And I want to get back there and go down into that and see where that goes. And finally, and, and this has got me really excited because you guys helped with this. We're coming in on almost on 140,000 subscribers. And if you can remember, guys, I promised all of you that uh, I would go back to the museum mine where we found all of those wonderful artifacts and go back down that um, winds or that incline that was down in there that we didn't get to explore. And the reason we, I didn't do it that day is because we were down there for a very long time. We weren't in contact with Mr. M topside and I was starting to get a little bit nervous and because I know what it's like waiting on people when you're at the surface. Um, and that's why we didn't get a chance to explore that. You know, we found a lot of awesome artifacts in that mine and I'm pretty certain that if I go down that laddered winds even deeper, we're gonna find even more cool stuff. And finally, before I go, I wanted to just give you guys a taste just a taste of the future of abandoned and forgotten places and what what I'm going to be working on. So um, in past episodes, I've explained to you guys how uh, I've evolved my channel and uh, how how I learned how to edit and um, and to do all these different things with Adobe Premiere Pro. That's my current editing software. And uh, I wouldn't say that I have it mastered, but I would say that I've, I've got it down pretty good at around 60, 60 to 70 percent. So I want to give myself a challenge. Um, and the next challenge I'm going to give myself is I'm going to start working with a program called um, Cinema 4D. Now, Cinema 4D is a uh, it's, it's a it's a 3D uh, modeling program that a lot of Hollywood studios have used over the years in movies such as like Iron Man, um, Spider-Man. Uh, it was heavily used in the movie um, Oblivion with uh, uh, Tom Cruise. And it was also currently used heavily in a, in a, a series on Amazon Prime called Star Trek Discovery. Okay, so if you want to look at, go back and look at some of those movies, Cinema 4D is what was used to create most all of the CGI in those films as well as Adobe After Effects. Those are the next two things that I'm going to be jumping into and here's why. I want to be able to present to you guys shots of when we're exploring an area, I want to be able to like split the mountain in half and then offer a 3D representation of the mine and the passages that we're exploring. And once you have that in 3D, of course, you can rotate it and twist it and turn it, fly all around it, look at it from all sides, because I think what that will do is offer you guys a better look at just exactly where we are in the mountain and how these miners um, excavated all these various passages, passages, shafts, and etc. I thought that would be pretty darn cool. And uh, I, I want to challenge myself. I, you know, I, I don't want to become kind of bored or stagnant in, in what I'm currently doing with the channel. So I'm, I'm putting that out there in front of me. And I'm going to start learning that a little, little by little over time. And hopefully uh, you might see some of that start to be incorporated into the channel let's just say over the next six months. Well, guys, before this gets any longer, I just wanted to, again, say thank you so much once again for all your thoughts and prayers. But I'm going to get back out of here because tomorrow or the next day, I'm headed back out into, into the field. We're going to start working on one of the mines we, I just, we just discussed here moments ago. And because I want to get an episode out to you, not this coming Saturday, but the following. Okay, so fully expect an episode, not this coming, but next, the following Saturday after that. 
Thanks guys. I really do appreciate it. You're just an you're just an awesome group of subscribers and I couldn't be happier. Okay, y'all take care now. Bye-bye.